Welcome. My name is Kathleen Willis, Superintendent of Schools for the North Reading Public School District. And I'm glad you're able to join us today for Inside North Reading Public Schools. Joining me today is the Chairman of the North Reading School Committee, Mr. Mel Webster. And he's going to talk a little bit about himself and his experience as a North Reading School Committee member. Welcome, Mel. Excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Glad uh, you could be here. Great new uh, idea here for North Reading Public Schools. I'm glad I could uh, participate in one of the early shows. Great. Well, let's get started. Um, I have a few questions that I'm going to ask you, so sure. feel free just to answer them in, in the best way that you would like. So why don't we start with you telling us a little bit about your background, your interests, and why you chose to serve on the North Reading School Committee. Great. Well, I've been a resident of uh, North Reading for about 30 years. Uh, give or take a year, and um, actually got involved with the school committee um, about 13 years ago or so. Uh, then Superintendent Dr. Troughton started a committee, it was called the School Finance Advisory Committee, and he was looking for citizens to participate to help with the budget process, mm -hmm. which was a great idea. At the same time, uh, another resident of town and I, uh, of town and I uh, a gentleman named Bob Armacost, we uh, started a fund to help fund uh, some purchases of the school district. The school was going through a hard time and they had to put off purchases of books. And uh, Mr. Amakos and I started a group called Save Our Schools, SOS, not mm -hmm. very original. And uh, we raised somewhere between fifty and $60,000 through commu uh, generous community members and businesses. And through those two things, uh, I got interested in the school department and decided to, uh, to run for the school committee. As far as general interests go, mm -hmm. I have varied interests. Uh, a father, two children, both in college, one a senior, one a freshman, uh, married, uh, my wife Kathleen, we've been married for 32 years in November, and uh, like all the Boston sports teams, love college sports, love music, so uh, it's a lot of interest. <laughs> That's great. So you've been now serving as a school committee member for the last 10 years. What changes have you witnessed over that time span? There have been uh, some tremendous changes. But the first thing I think is the most important is the consistency over the 10 years has been uh, the dedication and performance of our students, our staff, and our administrators. Mm -hmm. So despite all the changes that fly around them every day, mm -hmm. their performance has been outstanding. Um, that said, there have been a lot of, uh, I think, um, great changes. I think one of the most noticeable and the most significant is the upgrades in our facilities, which will culminate in two years when the middle school portion of the high school middle school project is completed. At that time, we'll have either renovated or built new schools for every school in the district. And this is a, a project program that began more than 10 years ago mm -hmm. with the little school before I was even on the school board. And I, and I think that is um, significant. Um, another change, and in North Reading, it's, it's kind of funny to say this, but you see even more involvement with, uh, by parents in, the, in the, their children's education, which I think all studies show without parent involvement, the, the students just don't perform well. Sure. And uh, over the last 10 years, that um, has grown, I think, exponentially in North Reading. We've, all, we've always had a lot of interest, but now I think the parent involvement is, is phenomenal. And if you go to any of the back to school nights or, or any other of, uh, parent meetings, you'll find just loads of parents. Um, a couple other things, um, our inclusion program continues to flourish and get stronger. I think the alternative uh, program that we've added at the high school where we place students in internships and hopefully to help them get jobs mm -hmm. when they're done with our school system has been a great success. I know I, this is the second year I believe for that. That's correct. Um, one of the other things this kind of bothers me, it seems like all the teachers are getting younger. It might be me <laughs> getting older, but I go to some of those teacher meetings and uh, I'm amazed at how young they are, but it's a great, it's great because they're energetic and they're, and they're vibrant. Um, I guess, um, and then of course, we have a new superintendent. Well, you came on three years ago. Dr. Mm -hmm. Troughton uh, was great to work with, was here mm -hmm. for many years, 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. And that was a big change for the district, uh, but uh, we've moved on without a hiccup, you know, with Dr. Keith Manville serving his one year as interim. Yes. But you've come in and brought mm -hmm. some new ideas um, and a new personality to the position, and I think that's uh, been another one of the major changes. Mm -hmm. so, and those are all local. There, are, I think we'll talk about these a little later. There mm -hmm. are some national and state changes that we see, have seen and continue to see. But those, I think, are some of the major um, local changes that, um, that I've seen. Over the last few years. Thank you. So what are your thoughts about some of the state and federal mandates that we now face 
under ed reform that came in in 1993, and more recently, President Obama's Race to the Top initiative. I think um, ed reform in 93 was at the right level, set the right tone for the changes that should be made, and I think it's been extremely successful, mm -hmm. especially in Massachusetts, in terms of bringing schools and, and students up. Um, and it's not an easy position, especially for the federal government to be in, because the, so the U.S. Department of Education looks at all the states and, and the U.S. territories. And, that, and their goal, its goal, is to try to ri raise everybody up to the same levels, you know, where everybody's performing at the same level. You'll have some districts higher, but you don't want any districts below that. The problem I have with all of this is a lot of the programs are geared to underperforming districts, mm -hmm. but yet they do a, almost a one-size-fits-all. So you have a school district like North Reading, and Yes, we need standards. Standards are critical. Without standards, you really can't have an education system. But you have a district like North Reading where we've performed exceedingly well over the years. It kind of gets frustrating when you're asked to change things that you seem to have been doing well for a number of years. I think it's difficult. They send a lot of money our way. Um, the state sends a lot of money our way but they don't send enough money to cover all the programs that they ask us to implement. So it's a difficult position. I, I'm a strong believer in local control of education. I think the school board role and the local administration's role is critical because nobody knows our kids in our district better than us. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the problem I have is trying to balance that. And I worry that um, the state and federal government are trying to gain a little more control of our districts and almost and, and make school committees weaker and I don't think that's the a good direction to go in for public education. Mm -hmm. So as we move from the broader state and federal level let's move more to the local level. The school committee engages in annual goal setting and this is a process that they undertake uh, following a self-assessment in the spring and then goal setting in the summer. Can you speak to the goals that have been achieved over the last three years and what are some of the focus areas on which the committee will put their efforts this school year? Well, as you know, this is the favorite area of uh, Mr. Venezia, um, who is the only member of the school committee who has served longer than I have. Jerry, Jerry loves the, the goals. I, I love them too. Um, we have accomplished a lot not some of these things we've accomplished aren't specifically stated in the goals, but they're um, they're related to the goals. Um, if you look at some of the things we've done in terms of, I, I think the the thing that I think is a grand slam is improving communications with the community. This show is is clear evidence of that. But um, I know when you came in, one of the first things you heard from me and the rest of the committee was we need to communicate mm -hmm. better, um, and we've done that. We have. Um, weekly articles by administrators or uh, at each school or by you or by the business uh, director of finance mm -hmm. and operations or others in the transcript every week. We have articles on the patch, um, your newsletter, which goes out on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Our website has been improved so we can communicate with the parents. You have this show. Um, I think we started this before you came on, but we now we visit every school mm -hmm. every year to enable the school committee meetings, to enable parents and students to present to us and teachers what's going on at their schools. And I think that's been, um, that's been a great success, um, those communications improvements that we've seen since you've been here. Student achievement is always a, a goal of the school committee working with you. Mm -hmm. And um, we've seen that improve substantially. The SAT scores, mm -hmm. which we just reported. And I know you always emphasize we can't um, make a whole lot out of one year's results, but it's something to be proud of. I just did a little um, research last night, and um, I looked at all of the schools in the Cape Ann League, and of those, all those schools, we were a third. We were only, um, we were two points lower than Maskinomit, and six points lower than Manchester Essex mm -hmm. in terms of our total SAT scores. The rest of the um, Cape Ann, Cape Ann League schools really can't compare to us. And, and I thought it was interesting. Um, Linfield, we scored 88 points higher than Linfield on our composite SAT scores. Mm -hmm. um, even, even some of the towns where you'd think um, bigger towns, more money maybe. Um, Reading, we scored higher than Reading. The only school in our area that um, outscored us fairly substantially, and that was only by 46 points, was Andover. And that's something to be proud of. And when I came on board with the committee, 
Um, that was Mr. Venetzi and I was one of our primary goals. We were, we were unhappy with the SAT scores. Mm. And I think the uh, superintendent back then, Dr. Troughton again, and Mr. Bernard at the high school put together a plan mm -hmm. um, to, to improve those scores, added courses for juniors, and we've seen the results. And, and I think um, student achievement in terms of our goal improvements has been, has been significant. We have steady MCAS scores. Uh, that's always a challenge to improve them because we started, we started from such a high mm -hmm. level the first year of the MCAS. Um, you want to talk about student achievement. What about the science competition winners? That's not something that's tested, um, right. but we have third grade students, fifth grade students, middle school students participating in these national science competitions, and in some cases winning the, winning the entire competition. Mm -hmm. Nothing exemplifies student achievement more than something like that. You can look at a test score, but, but that's real life. Mm -hmm. That's kids thinking, solving problems, which is what education is all about. Um, another goal that I'm really proud of is our self-assessment that the school committee does. And I think we've done this for three years now. Yes. It, and um, people might say, well, self-assessment, you're going to tell everybody what a great job you're doing. But it's an honest assessment mm -hmm. of what we as a school committee have achieved. And the areas where we don't feel we've, do, we've done well, we've worked on those areas to improve them. And uh, I think our school committee is a highly functional committee working with you and the rest of the administrators. And it's a collegial committee. We disagree. We don't throw bombs at each other in our meetings. Um, we try to work things out um, before meetings so we don't you know, have these, um, you know, if you have an issue with a committee member, you talk to them before the meeting and there's no need to, to make that a public, you know, public display. And so I'm really proud of that, um, of that self-assessment tool, um, budgets. Uh, that's one of the big responsibilities of school committee since Ed Reform is, is the budget, mm -hmm. working with you and the Director of Finance and Operations. And I think we've set a great balance of pushing hard for what we feel we need to continue to successfully run the district, but also balancing the needs of the community in terms of what it can afford. There are a lot of things I know that you would like to see mm -hmm. in this school district, in our buildings, and, and we can't afford them. And they would be great for our kids to have but we have to be reasonable in what we ask for. And I think that um, that combines with another thing that um, I'm proud of, which is um, working well with other town boards. And we have a great relationship with the other town boards. Yes, there are gonna be hiccups and glitches along the way, but the Finance Planning Committee, which I believe was an idea of uh, the Sleckman back several years ago, is incredibly successful at bringing all the boards together, especially on potentially controversial issues um, mm -hmm. surrounding spending money and, and getting, trying to get everybody on the same page. So again, we don't go off and, and start you know, um, you know, throwing darts at each other and, and saying, you're wrong, we're right. Um, and I think that working better with other town boards has, has been a goal, ongoing goal that we've been um, successful at. Finally, in terms of what we achieved, we rebuilt the system. Um, I, th I forget how many years ago it was, six years ago maybe, where we had a significant budget hit. We had half days on uh, every Wednesday for the full year. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it was a nightmare. Um, we just didn't have the funds to keep the kids in school. We had to save that money. And we've rebuilt the system. We've put things back in, technology, librarians, et cetera, specialists, um, paras. We've rebuilt that over the six years, and, and um, I'm really proud of that um, as an accomplishment for the committee. I think going forward, we're going to work on a lot of the same things. Student achievement's number one. Um, there's a really important issue which doesn't directly relate to student achievement, and that's our, um, our uh, food service program, mm -hmm. our cafeterias. And I know that Michael Connolly, our new director of finance and operations, is going to be working on that. That's in our goals to um, improve the operations. It's costing us more money than it should. It's not self-sustaining. And I think that's going to be an important goal for us over the next year. But student achievement's at the top. Um, concern about implementing the Common Core, the new park uh, assessment test. We'll be watching all of those things. But So I think it's student achievement number one and kind of everything else falls below that. And I'll say, um, of course, a major goal is getting the high school kids into the new high school in mm -hmm. September and making that a smooth transition and then popping the middle school kids down to the old high school and making that a smooth transition for, for, for next year. So I think, I think there's a lot more goals we, we work on, but I think those are probably the highlights. Those are the highlights. Well, thank you. It was pretty comprehensive. I'd be interested, you know, in, in your opinion on, on some, of, uh, some of the goals, what you think, especially moving forward, if you think there are other things that 
you know, are, are important for us to, to have a focus on. Sure. Well, I think you've, you've touched upon most of them. Of course, student achievement is at the top of the list. But it's also ensuring that we educate the whole child, right. that we are dedicating resources to the arts. Um, to make sure that our students are familiar um, with the arts and become proficient in finding uh, an area of the arts with, they like to focus their energies. And also um, the physical attributes of our students, engaging in physical education and providing opportunities for, st for students to engage in after school activities and in the sports the many, many sports opportunities that are provided to students through North Reading. So it's again taking a look at the whole child. Um, we do want to develop their cognitive abilities, but we also want to develop their social emotional abilities as well. I think, and one just on the arts, I think it's exciting to see the growth in the uh, high school band, for example. I think, you know, last year we had Absolutely. maybe around 20 students, and this year I think we have close to 30 or, or a few more. And, and mm -hmm. that's because we've rebuilt the, um, you've been able to rebuild the music program in the middle schools and the elementary schools, mm -hmm. which was a victim of that budget cutting back five, six years ago. And we're seeing the, you know, we're seeing the success of that. And, and I, I agree with you on the whole child. Mm -hmm. I know people don't like, oh, what does that even mean, the whole child? There's more to kids than just taking tests. There's That's other right. things that kids excel at that we mm -hmm. need to bring out of them and, and help them to, to succeed, you know, maybe in those areas when they get out of high mm -hmm. school. And, and you just um, hit upon some of the other skills that we want to make sure that our students develop while they're with us for the 13 years that they're with us. And that's those 21st century skills mm -hmm. that are considered to be soft skills. But we know those are the skills that employers are looking for um, in making sure that their employees are successful. Communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. Those skills are very important to develop and embed within the academic experience that our students have. Right. I also think it's very important um, as a school district to make sure that we provide students with the tools that they'll need, that they're already using, but that they need to develop to be successful when they leave us, and that's in the area of technology. Right. So we need to improve our infrastructure. We need to provide parity at the elementary schools when our beautiful state-of-the-art middle school and high school facility come on board. We need to repurpose what we already have in the middle school and the high school into our elementary schools and make sure that we have the kind of wireless infrastructure that will support the, the kinds of technologies um, that are new to us right now that will be commonplace in a year or two and to be able to accommodate those technologies that haven't even been right. created yet. And I think a positive and, and that, on that note is our staff, our, our teachers, have already been through a great deal of professional development and then brought that back and, and the teach, some teachers are training other teachers. So it's not technology for technology's sake and we've seen the demonstrations at the school committee meetings. It's using technology to really help kids learn better and to help them like to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think, as you said, most of these kids are familiar with technology and we need to, we need to teach in their world exactly. so, so we relate better to them. Exactly. And finally, I think something that's um, on every educator's <coughs> mind uh, is the new educator evaluation process. So that is a focus area for all educators in the North Reading Public School District this year. We are not a race to the top district. So we are implementing for the first time right. the educator evaluation system. So half of our faculty and administration will be um, supervised and evaluated using the new system this year. As a matter of fact, all administrators will be using it this year. Right. Uh, I started last year, as you well know, right. um, with the goal setting and the self-assessment. So I'm well into this process. I thought it was important for me to um, be on the forefront of this to show educators that it can be done in ways that um, really exemplify the good work that we're already doing. Not to consider it one more thing to be accomplished, but to document what we're already doing well and where do we need to continue to grow because as, as educators we do need to grow from one year to the next. And so that's what the emphasis of this new educator evaluation system is, is to identify areas of growth based on data and evidence and then put into place those actions that will be used to um, assess whether or not we achieved our goals. Right. So that is a, a significant focus for all of us in the school district mm -hmm. this year and um, as a result the administrators and I will be spending a lot more time in classrooms with students and educators taking a look at the good work that is being done and focusing on areas of improvement. 
So those, that's the snapshot, as you had said, about some of the things that we're focusing on this year. But there's many more uh, areas for focus. So as we bring this to a close, as you think about um, all of the information that you've just shared with us today, what would you say you are most proud of as a school committee member in North Reading? I, I think, you know, initially it's, it's not um, what I'm proud of in terms of what I've accomplished, what the committee has accomplished, as I mentioned earlier. I'm proud of what this district does, what our teachers do, what the administrators do, and what the students do, what colleges they go to, the kind of jobs they get out of college, um, the way they carry themselves in the community after they're graduated or even when they're still in school and when they get into professional, you know, their professional lives. And, and so th that's one of the things I'm most proud of is that we, we produce solid, I'm going to use the word kids, we produce solid kids when they come out of our, mm -hmm. when they come out of our school system. Um, but if I want to look at some of the other things, um, you know, one of the things I'm really most proud of is the, um, the turf field facility, mm -hmm. which um, we had to work for a long time with great cooperation from the Hillview and Parks and Recs and the Selectmen and other committees in town. And we had to um, be innovative to get that deal approved in order for the Hillview to cover the cost of that um, facility. That's one of the best things that happened, that has happened, not just to the school department, but to this town, because mm. the whole town uses it. The youth programs, um, the high school programs, they were able to, Parks and Rec is able to bring some funds in for future, you know, for maintenance and future upkeep and for, you know, future enhancements to the uh, facility. So I think that that's one of the things I'm most proud of is we were able to get that facility and, and it's used every day. Um, I think uh, some of the other ones, again, student achievement um, and, and the, those SAT scores, th those numbers blew me away when I saw those numbers. I couldn't believe how high they were. And um, obviously, as you always say, we need to continue to um, focus and, and improve but that says a lot for um, this district. Um, you know, you can look at the third grade performance or the sixth grade performance or whatever. But the, the most important performance is where are the kids in the 10th grade? Where are the kids in the 12th grade when they're graduating? Mm -hmm. And we have just a tremendous record of, of at our high school of, of where the kids are when they graduate. And they're, for the most part, they're where they're supposed to be. And I think they're well prepared for college and, and for the business world or the military where they're going off to. Um, so I guess that I'm really proud of. I really like, um, one of the things that I really like that we're doing, we did last year, we're doing it in this year, and I know the committee, we had talked about this in our goals, is having um, teachers and administrators come in and present to us on a regular basis what's going on in the schools, the different programs. That's been great. Mm -hmm. it's been, that's been as good as being able to go out and visit the schools, um, and, I, and I really like that. Mm -hmm. I think that, that helps us get a flavor for the district, and then it helps us to, to create policies and, um, and, and procedures for the district because we, we know what the district needs. Um, so those are the, some of the key things. One real disappointment, and I don't think, I don't see ever being able to change this, and it was when I first ran, it was one of the things I really wanted to do, which was work to eliminate ex, uh, fees for extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. that, that to me is, is one of the worst things that we and many other school districts do. Um, you know, a lot of families are paying thousand dollars a year or more to have their students play athletics to participate in extracurricular activities and to ride the bus. The bus, I can live with a bus fee, but I really don't like living with extracurricular fees and, and athletic fees. It's just, it, 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 it flies in the face of what public education should be all about. So mm -hmm. uh, if I have a disappointment, that, that's the biggest. Um, and my final, the, the, the final biggie, I can't wait till the new schools open, the mm -hmm. high school and the middle school. It's just fantastic seeing that go up. I want to thank the community again. Mm -hmm. um, we put a lot of burden on the backs of a lot of people in this community. And they stepped up and they voted yes, not once, but twice. And mm -hmm. it was really, it was hard the first time. It was really hard the second time. And I think we have to continue to think about those citizens who are having a hard time, you know, making ends meet. And, and they're, they're paying their tax bills and that's going to build our school. And um, we have to be grateful for them, not only now, not only in a year when the high school opens and in two years when the middle school opens, but for the, li the life of that school is the sacrifices that were made by this town to, to build those schools. But I can't, I can't wait for the open house for the high school. And I think um, it's going to be one of the most exciting days um, in this town.
that, and I've been here 30 years. So there may have been things exciting before, before I was here, but I think that's going to be one of the most exciting things we will, will have witnessed in a long time. Well, you'll get no argument from me as far as that's concerned. And I, too, thank the members of this community that continue to support education in such an important way, um, first with finances, but also your support on a daily basis. It can't be said enough. So again, thank you to the community of North Reading. And again, thank you, Mr. Webster, for joining me today. It's great being here. Um, sharing your thoughts and ideas with the community. And I'd also like to thank the other members of the school committee for their leadership and their support um, on an ongoing basis. Yes. This work couldn't be done without you. So again, thank you. And, and as I think about concluding today's session um, with a quote, I wanted to share a quote with you on leadership that I think exemplifies the work that our school committee does. And this quote is by John Quincy Adams. And he states, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Thank you, and good night.